Good afternoon, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. We got a long chapter today, so we're going to get right into it. We're going to get started. So, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. I pray everybody's eyes be open to see, ears be open to hear, hearts be able to receive the word of life, the spiritual seed sown, that it produce in us physically, in our mind, will, and our emotions as we grow in love towards you. God, we love you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we're going to dive right in, church, because I want to make sure we can get to all of this lesson today. Please make sure you're following along with us every day because these will all go together at the very end. So Song of Solomon, chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 1. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is like a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. Now, the first thing we see is that the Lord calls out that she is fair, she is beautiful. Behold, thou art beautiful, thou art fair. We see through this entire chapter that he is he is affirming her over and over and over in her beauty toward that he sees beauty in her. And what we want to see is she has just made the steps towards him. She's only she's only started to go. She's only took in her heart position there. She hasn't got all the way, but she is beautiful. To him it's his affirmation it's 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 how he makes him feel and this is where we start to see the heart of God and how what we do and how we respond to him makes him feel dove's eyes represent the single-mindedness and loyalty and we see that it is also hid it's hid behind her hair behind the locks that represents the humility it's the veil that she, she's single-minded towards God. She's loyal towards God. We've talked about doves before. But that's, that's, that's her position towards him, represented in humility. Hair is a representation of the dedication. And that's what we can see that in Samson, being a Nazarite. You can't cut your hair. And we also see that being the glory of the woman, the hair, the covering over her. And that's the gladness that comes from being well fed in his flock it's it's beautiful hair feeding in the mount the the mount gilead it's it's beautiful terrain it's it's well nourished thy teeth are like the lock are, the, are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn which came up from the washing everywhere everyone beareth twins and none is barren among them now this is powerful you carry your life in your teeth think about that for a minute you carry your life in your teeth Teeth represent the life that is shorn or cut down, a.k.a. pruned by the Lord, and washed clean. Talking about your life being washed clean and being pruned of the Lord. Bearing twins was used in the temple making, combining two pieces of wood coupled together for the corners. This is powerful. When it talks about being twins, it's talking about having corners coupled together. This is what gives strength and stability it's joining yourself with the Lord. This is powerful, church. Lips are like a scarlet, or thy lips are like a thread of scarlet. Thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. Lips are an indication of health. Blue lips come from lack of oxygen. So I just want you to think about that. The scarlet, which is red, so red lips, represent the life-giving force on the inside of you from the offering on the cross. It's it's the blood covenant of Jesus that gives you life. So your your lips are red. You have life. You have oxygen in you because of the Lord breathing in you because of what he did on the cross. Now, speech is also translated as wilderness. Now, this is powerful. Their speech is comely. It, this also refers to the place in which you are fed on the word of God is beautiful to him. Comely is beautiful. So talking about your lips, your lips are red because of the sacrifice, the oxygen, the life in you comes also from the speech or the wilderness, the place in which you feed. We talked about that yesterday. And that is beautiful to God because if you're feeding on his word, you have life on the inside of you. Both of those go together. Her temples or countenance was beautiful. Pomegranates are a representation of the sweet and the red color of them representation of the blushing 
also within thy locks. So we see humility again, but we see the beauty that God sees on her face, the countenance that it is sweet, but it is also, it's blushing. She's blushing at the, at the, at the affirmation that comes from the Lord. This is not a, that this is not somebody that's just flamboyant about relationships and it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's very much a sensitive subject. It's, it makes you blush when the Lord affirms you. And we're not going to go into that. We'll go into that more later. Thy neck is like a tower of David builded for an armory, whereon there hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. Now David was a man after God's own heart. His tower, the tower in Jerusalem, was strong to protect the city of Jerusalem. We know that the neck refers to the will that is strong and obedient to God, willing to fight the enemy and stand strong in the Lord. These a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. We're talking about the shield of faith, that your, your will is strong and steadfast in the faith of God, that you are dedicated to him. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins, which feed among the lilies. Now her breasts are a representation of the life-giving force of a woman that produces milk to sustain children. It's her youth. The way in which she nurtures is also among the lilies. It's pure. So not only do you have, he's affirming the fact that she has the, the naturing or the nurturing aspect of her and the youth, but also the way she does it is pure. Until the day break and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Now, the night is prophetic of the day. We don't have time to explain that, but the night is a very much a prophetic of the day. It speaks of the morning. She says, I will, indicating that even in the night, until all the shadows flee away, I will not quit. Which means that even in these shadows, even in these times, the foxes that we talked about in the earlier chapter, as they're coming out, the strongholds are coming out, I'm going through the dark periods of time. I'm not going to quit. I'm going even in the midst of that. And even before they flee away, I will. I have made up my mind. I have made the decision to go. And this is what God likes. Because get me also refers to her specific plan in God. That I will get me. I will. I have, dedic I have chosen in my mind. I have made my mind up that I will follow the plan of God for my life. Now, we know that Rur represents the burial and the anointing. And while frankincense represents the intercession, the bridegroom is calling her up into the mountain, which is the place where she will rest in the atonement and the hill in which she will intercede for her. She has now committed in her heart to go all the way and not stop. Because we see in earlier chapters, Jesus called her to go into the mountain. And then she went to the city and then Jesus met her there. But she's saying, I will go to the mountain. I will go to the place where I rest in the offering of Jesus and in the and in the intercession that he makes for me, I, I, will, I will have constant fellowship with the Lord as I rest in what the sacrifice has done. I'm going, and I'm not going to stop. Thou art fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. We see another affirmation. You are beautiful. There is no spot or hindrance in you anymore. Like you're not, you're not backing off. You're coming all the way. This is beautiful to me. I, I, I see great delight. I delight in this. I see beauty in you. You are beautiful to me because you have made up your mind to come with me all the way. We see that we also know that no spot, a spotless lamb is what you needed for a sacrifice. She is this spotless. There's no, there's no hesitation anymore. She's going all the way. There's no spot. There's no thing that's going to hold her back from doing the plan of God. And that is beautiful to him. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of the top of Ammon, from the top of Shanir and Hermon, from the lion's den, from the mountains of the leopards. So first time she is called spouse. So we see this as indicating another change in the relationship to go deeper into maturity. So it's he's been he's been wooing her, beckoning her, calling her trying to bring her all the way all the way in to the deepness of the relationship into the maturity and he calls her his spouse my bride my spouse you are now enjoined betrothed to me like I, I, I have taken you in all the way you're committed now 
And when you're committed to God, when you've fully given yourself to him, you now have all the rights of a bride. You have all the rights of the spouse of God. We also see that he is calling her into the warfare and to see the perspective he has from the top of the mountains. Now, lions and leopards are the animals that used to eat, that eat humans, for one. That's one thing they did. But the children of Israel were very afraid of them. So he's calling her to enter into this warfare, to fight the fight, but to see it from the place of victory, from them on the top of the mountain. Not from the valley, but I'm bringing you to the top of the mountain so you can see the victory in it, even in the midst of the attack. And then I love verse 9. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. Now we see Jesus' emotions on full display here to, to, to us. That we are one who is us, unusually, unusually attractive. This is unusually attractive. To him, it, it causes him to have great delight. It ravishes his heart. And what ravishes his heart so much is that she has one eye and one chain. These two phrases are very important because it's her commitment to go, but she hasn't gone yet. Think about that too. She hasn't actually went. She just said she was going. The singleness of mind in her eyes, the surrender of it to go, I will look at you. I, I'm single-minded. It takes a mustard seed of faith, a single-minded, unadulterated, pure, non-contaminated amount of faith to move a mountain. She's single-minded. Her eye is one. If your eye be single. And she's also with one chain of the neck. The neck, obviously, representative of the will, but we saw earlier chains, the representative of gold chains, representative of giving your will to deity giving your will to god and it takes one one step in saying i'm i surrender and it ravishes the heart of god i, I really want to spend some more time but we got to keep going i just want you to see this that just that little step you take ravishes the heart of god it pleases him so much he has great delight in that you just in your innermost parts you see him and you're willing to give yourself to him Verse 10, how fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is thy love than wine, and the smell of thy ointments than all spices? Now, this was in the previous verse too, but I want you to see this again. He is so affectionate of her beauty in two ways. One, you see the humanity aspect of when he calls her sister, and the marital aspect of it when he calls her spouse. So you see both of these aspects and that in every area he sees beauty. Her love for him is better than anything else. Her smell, her fragrance, and we know that fragrance comes from the internal qualities, is better than any other smell. Her, her, her fragrance, what she has on the inside of her towards him, is so pleasant. It's better than any other spices. There's nothing that compares to the internal qualities that she has for him. This is how he sees, that how fair, how beautiful are you? How beautiful is your love? Thy lips, my spouse, drop as a honeycomb. Milk and honey are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. So lips referred to as the honeycomb, which is sweet to the hungry. That when, when somebody is hungry, the honeycomb is, is, it might be bitter, but it is satisfying. We also see that milk and honey refers to the prosperity of the land to sustain. Now this, this next part, under the tongue refers to the secret place. It is also the fastest way into the bloodstream. If you ever go to the doctor, they'll give you a little uh, dissolvable pill. They'll say, put it under your tongue. It's the fastest way into the bloodstream. It's the fastest way to the heart outside of an IV. Now that's so powerful because that means she has sustainment and pleasure in the secret place. It's the closest thing to her heart. It is beautiful. The milk and honey, the sustaining, the, the abundance, the provision that was in the land that she had on the inside of her at her deepest point, at her heart, at her secret place. The closest thing to get to her. The fastest thing in her. Her garments. Now white representing the purity of the bride. We see that, but it is 
fragrant to God. The smell of Lebanon, which was the, it, the, the trees of Lebanon had such strong odor. They were very sweet to smell, but they were fragrant. They were, they were strong and sturdy. They were used in the building of the temple, but they had extreme fragrance coming with them. And he said, your garments is like the smell of Lebanon. You're, 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 you're strong in your relationship with me. You, you have great fragrance of purity towards me. I love you. He's saying, it's, it's affirming her over and over and over. Knowing also at this point, just to say it again, that she hasn't went all the way. He is calling deep unto deep. He is calling these internal qualities out of her. She hasn't even exhibited all of these, but he is calling it. He's beckoning it out of the inside of her. A garden encloses my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up and a fountain sealed. Her garden was shut off from any other than the bridegroom. And her spring or her fountain was pure and sealed. It was undefiled from the world. The wellspring of life referring to the heart position of the bride solely to him. My, the, the things that are coming out of me are completely dedicated to you. There is nothing. My garden is closed off from anybody else. The inside, the things that come out of me are to you. Nobody else. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, campfire with spikenard. Now, some of these are just amazing phrases, church. Her plants, that word plants also means weapons. What she has as weapons are the fruits of the Spirit, the pomegranates, the, the red, sweet fruits. This is a depiction of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that you use as weapons against the enemy. Thy plants, thy plants, literally referring to the weapons that God has put on the inside of you by living by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And I love this. Campfire, also known as the henna blooms. The beautiful flowers. They have sweet fragrance of the spikenard, which is anointing of high honor. Spikenard is oil used in the anointing of people in high honor, high position. But what I want you to see in these next two phrases is campfire with spikenard. Campfire, the henna blooms, refers to ransom. The fragrance of of the ransom that you're giving yourself over to me is beautiful to me. And I want you to see that because the next part says spikener with saffron. Calmus and cinnamon, all trees of frankincense, myrrh, aloes, and the chief spices. The saffron is vivid red threads. That's the vivid redness, the threads that come out of the saffron producing the spikener, producing the anointing, the oil, the saffron representing the sacrifice. So you have spikenard, this anointing, this fragrance, the same as the spikenard before that, one dealing with the henna blooms, one of them is dealing with the beautiful flower that's known for ransom, and the other dealing with the sacrifice, both representations of giving yourself over to him. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful fragrance to him when you become a ransom that he can purchase and you become a sacrifice in which you give. It's both. He not only purchases you, but you give yourself to him. Calmus and cinnamon. Calmus is linked to medical proper it has medical properties of health. That's beautiful. That he sees he sees the health, that she is healthy. It's it's the health on the inside of her. The cinnamon is a potent fragrance used in sweetening. And then you have frankincense. All the trees of frankincense refers to her intercession, her communion, her fellowship, her dialogue with the Lord. Myrrh, as we know, is used in the burial offerings. Used, obviously, in anointing oil also. We see that aloes are prickly prants. That they, can, they can weather storms, but they have great health qualities on the inside of them. All depictions of her love and dependence for God. And Jesus is calling deep unto deep. He's calling this out of her. He's saying all these qualities, as you are a ransom, as you are a sacrifice to me, as you do have... Um, that this this health on the inside of you that you have this sweetness you are you you can be used in sweetening i mean you this this communion and fellowship intercession with me this 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 being a sacrifice to me i mean you have the fragrance of a henna bloom and you have the offering of a saffron that's beautiful that's a beautiful depiction 
We see a fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Now, fountain is a source, well is a storage, and stream is a flow. All three representations of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit being the source that fills you, that you store on the inside of you, and that comes out of you. Calling out the Spirit that lives on the inside of you. A fountain, a well, and a stream. Three different pieces. And last verse, Awake, O north wind, and come, thou south. Blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. Now we see two types of wind. We see the north wind. This is the testing. It's the cold wind. We see the south wind coming from the ocean. That's the refreshing wind. We want to blow or come into my garden. We want the maturity. We want these spices to flow out. I want my beloved to be pleased with what he finds. Her, her desire is to grow in her relationship with God. I, I'm beckoning all these things to come. The refreshingness, knowing also that that means the trial is, the, the attack is coming at the same time the refreshing is coming. But at the end, all of the fragrance of what's in my garden, my, my ransom, my sacrifice, being a henna bloom, being a saffron, being like cinnamon, being like aloe, a way to weather the storm and still have the internal qualities that are used in very many different purposes for health. That I will sustain because I'm calling. I want my beloved to be pleased. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. I want him to come to me and I want him to partake of what I have to offer. I want the winds to blow. Oh, north wind, oh, south wind, I want, the, I want all of it to come. Because where I'm at right now, I want to go deeper. This is what the bride calls out at the end. That he affirms her all these things that are on the inside of her. Affirmation after afferma affirmation after affirmation. She took a step and Jesus said, hey, You are my sister, my spouse. You are my beloved. I, I am ravished in my heart that you have just decided to come after me. You haven't even came all the way. You haven't even went to the mountain yet. You just decided. You, made, you, you turned your heart towards me. And that ravishes my heart. And all of my affirmations towards you are what are in the inside of you. And she says, because you, all of this affirmation that you just gave me, because of that, I want the winds to come. I want to grow. I want everything that's coming next. The north winds and the south winds, dealing with the hot and the cold, the refreshing, the trial, the, the seasons of life. I want it to come because I want my beloved to come into the garden. I want him to take delight in what is on the inside of me. When the winds blow, the, the fragrance comes out because I'm proved. I show what is on the inside of me. I demonstrate my love back to God. All these things that he just said about me. I turn around and demonstrate it to him that you are right. I will be a saffron. I will be a henna bloom. I will be cinnamon. I will be aloe. I will be dedicated to you. There is none other. I am single-minded. I chose you and I'm going all the way. I will get me. I will go and I will not stop. I'm coming after you. So come into your garden. Take pleasure in what you find. Because I desire you. Now, church, we're out of time today, so we're gonna we're gonna have to end right here. But come back tomorrow. We're gonna look at chapter five. Chapter four is just an amazing chapter as we see this affirmation of the Lord towards us. Because all of this is what he calls out to us as the church. This is what he sees in us. When we take a small step towards him. When we turn our heart towards him and make the decision to come, it ravishes his heart. He takes great delight in seeing the fact that we just made the decision. We haven't even went all the way. We just made the decision, and that ravishes his heart. So, Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let this word come alive inside of us. Teach us how to live with all of these qualities that you call out in us. Let us demonstrate it to you. As the winds blow, let us show you how much we love you. God, we thank you for all that you're doing. Bless everybody. Let this word come alive. Give them wisdom, revelation, 
And I thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Church, have a wonderful day today. Please make sure you share it with all your friends. And we'll see you tomorrow as we study chapter 5.